I sometimes think my grandmother repeated this story to me so often because women were scarcely remembered by history except for pieces of handiwork. or as the spouse on their husband's headstones. Or perhaps, with a sense of kinship only women feel one for another, she thought how much more unlikely it would be for the story of a black slave woman to be remembered by history. Eventually, in the summer of 1864, the war would reach the Chattahoochee River. Barbara Caroline's mother, heavy with child and frightened by the noise of the siege of Atlanta and the battle so close to her home, entrusted the lives of her children to her beloved Aunt Sarah. In October, she would give birth to the last of her twelve children, and in November, General Tecumseh Sherman would begin his march to the sea. had become a daily occurrence at the Bricker home that summer, but with the destruction of the countryside and the advancement of Sherman's army, they had become even more threatening. When John Bricker was pressed to assist the Union army with his skills as a blacksmith, he refused. In the midst of the argument, Aunt Sarah gathered the children and hid them for their safety. When she returned, she found that the home had been destroyed and found John Bricker beaten and bleeding badly in a ditch near the house. His wife lay dead at his side. Aunt Sarah picked him up and helped him to the house where she stayed and nursed him back to health and his family. Most of the families from that area beside the Chattahoochee would leave Georgia, pushed westward by the loss of their homes and family. They would eventually settle in East Texas and form a new town and name it Atlanta. Barbara and Charles would eventually marry, and Barbara Caroline would live to be a ripe old age but she wouldn't forget to pass the story down to her daughter and then to her daughter's daughter who would pass it on to me of how an entire family owed their lives to Aunt Sarah.